In the last video we learned about the significance of our coefficients and to always check the confidence interval. We'll do the exact same thing in R. Um, for this purpose I constructed uh, an imaginary case study. In this example you are researching the liquidity of Liverpool's most important colonial merchant houses. You are studying the data of a certain year and while you are browsing through the data file you get an idea. What if the foreign exchange held in a certain point of time can be explained by the distance in meters to the next commercial bank? Um, so the idea is if uh, the bank is far away you're much less likely to take the foreign exchange to your bank. Mm, so in this case we have one dependent variable that is foreign exchange held and a distance to, distance to the next commercial bank in meters uh, as an independent variable. So as always let's read in our data. So I call the data frame Liverpool put an assignment operator there, put in the command read.csv because as always it's a CSV file on my desktop. I gotta give it the path file so it's C users Joshua and I put that on my desktop again desktop and it's called distance.csv Hit enter, okay. And as always, let's view our data. So view live oh oops, view Liverpool. Alright, there it is. Um and let's attach our data. So attach Liverpool. Okay. First of all, let's uh, take a look at the scatter plot. So we gotta put in the plot command and um, we gotta put in distance. Now remember the first value in the parenthesis, this is our explanatory variable. And the second one, this is uh, um, um, foreign exchange held. So it's called foreign, right there, foreign and distance. These are our two variables. Um, and the second one, this is our dependent variable. So um, distance is the independent variable and foreign exchange held is the um, dependent variable. Okay, let's plot that. Okay, there's our plot. Um, well, um, this doesn't look too promising. Um, so let's model this relationship in a simple linear regression model. So I call the model, let's say model one. Okay, put the assignment operator there. And uh, remember the command for a linear model is LM. We open the parentheses and then we got to put in the um, um, dependent variable that is foreign the curly operator is a function of distance. Okay. Again, let's check the regression line in our scatter plot. Um, so we put in a B line and the name of our model because again, our regression, uh, our regression model is basically is the regression line because we only have one um, independent variable. Okay, let's check that. Okay, still doesn't look too promising. Um, let's take a look at the coefficients. Okay, let's take a look at the coefficients of our um, of our model. So coefficients, open parentheses, and we want to know about the coefficients of model one. Okay, um, seems like the distance. So right here, seems like uh, the distance has a positive influence on the foreign exchange held. But as you know from the last video, this ain't the full story. Let's view the summary of our model. And by the way, the, um, the coefficients are also in the summary, so you don't need the coefficients command anymore. Um, but before we do this, we should be clear about our significance level. Um, a as always, I'll use a p-value of 0.05 as the significance threshold. So I choose a 95% confidence interval. Okay, let's view the summary. Let's view the summary. Summary model one. Okay, well, let's skip the residual statistic. Let's skip that one. Um, uh, we do this in another video and let's get straight to the summary for our coefficients. So this is the summary for our coefficients right here. Um, let's check that. Um, first, there you see our parameters. So the our parameters, um, we have a um, intercept, we have a constant and we have one dependent uh, independent variable and this is the coefficient for our independent variable distance. So the intercept is our constant and the estimate for our intercept is 
914.04. This is the estimate for our intercept. And the estimate for our coefficient for the distance is 0.3364. So the regression equation would be foreign hat equals 914.04 plus 0.3364 times the distance in meters. Um, there you see the standard error, the standard error. Um, and as always, we are only interested whether the coefficients of our independent variable is significant or not, because we are because the intercept um, doesn't make sense. So we are only interested in this right here. We are only interested in the distance. Um, so we want to know whether it is significant or not. Um, take a look at this standard error right here. Take a look at this standard error and compare it uh, with the estimate. So compare the standard error with the estimate. Okay, compare these both, the standard error and the estimate. Um, what do you say? Well, it's highly insignificant. Zeros right in there, so the zeros in there. Okay, so the standard error of 0.09, it, that means that um, the value could be either 0.3364 plus uh, 0.8959 or 0.3364 minus 8959. So this is the, the our confidence interval and zeros in inside our confidence interval. So um, I would say this is highly insignificant. Um, so um, and we are assured about this by the p-value. This is the p-value. I know it looks a bit weird, but this is the p-value. Um, and we are assured by this um, that this is insignificant by a p-value of 0.7139. Um, this p-value says that if we'd use a significance threshold of 0.713, then, oh, then and only then, or a, um, a significance threshold above 7.13 or equal to 7.13, and only then the estimate would be statistically different from zero. In order to do this, we'd have to use a 28% confidence interval. Uh, that is way too low. So under the 95% confidence interval we chose, we certainly don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis of equal to zero. When that happens, we say that this is insignificant. This right here is insignificant. It's n not statistically different from zero. We don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Um, the t-value right here, so you see the t-value, the t-value right there, um, this is uh, always an indicator for significance. You need that to calculate uh, the p-value. Um, yeah, and, and we say that uh, um, a, a t value of round about two is equal um, to statistical significance under 95% confidence interval. So a high t value is always an indicator for significance. Um, if you take a look down here, so if you take a look down here, um, you'll see that R gives us some more information. If e, it even tells us about um, R squared, so it tells us about R squared. Um, well, 0.011, that is not a pretty good fit. Um, and there's also something called adjusted R squared. Um, adjusted R squared is always better if you have multiple independent variables. Um, for this example right here, it's not of real use because as you know, R squared is always between zero and one, and this is minus 0.07. So for a, for a case with a single independent variable, I wouldn't use adjusted R squared, but R squared. But if you have um, a model with with more or with several um, independent variables, I choose um, adjusted R squared. Um, and it even gives you a p-value for your entire model. Um, so this p-value right here tells you whether your model as a whole is significant or not. Um, since we're only using one independent variable, this is equal to the p-value of our independent variable. 